I've decided that high run-walk ratios are of no value to me, none at all, and maybe not to you either. Hi, I'm Ralph, and this is Ages Runner. If you're new here, I'm all about helping you have a fun and safe running life, especially as you grow older. So that bold statement I made in my intro deals more around pace. And even though I say don't focus on pace, sometimes we want to. For example, you're doing a race with a cutoff time, you need to be concerned about pace. And pace is also a good way to measure your fitness. So sometimes we want to monitor pace and we want to improve it. But is there a smarter way to do it rather than just running faster? Because when you run faster, you elevate your heart rate, you increase your lactate production, it's hard on your, your knees and your joints. Is there a smarter way to do it? Now, if you do run, walk, run like I do, you know you have four variables or four knobs you can turn to control your pace. You have run time and run speed, walk time and walk speed, but four knobs to turn, four variables is way too many. Imagine driving your car and you have four levers, pedals, or knobs to turn just to control the speed. Now, four is too many, we only need two, and the two we're concerned about are run walk ratio and run speed. The ratio of run time to walk time is mathematically what's important. Doesn't matter what the times are. For example, a one to one ratio of 15 second walk and 15 second run, and 30 second run and 30 second walk mathematically give me the same overall pace, everything else being equal. Now in reality, it might be a little different because a 15-15 cycle will give me more walk breaks. Every time I speed up and slow down, I'm inefficient, I introduce variability. So there may be some difference in that respect, but we're ignoring that, that's out of the scope of this video. And we're also going to ignore walking speed because you really shouldn't be playing around too much with your walking speed. You wanna walk at a pace that gives you some recovery because if you don't, then why are you doing one rock run? You should just be walking at a pace that helps you recover a little bit. So we're not gonna uh, look too much. We'll, we'll look a little bit at walking speed, but don't play around with walking speed. So that leaves running speed uh, and run walk ratio as the key variables. So I decided to do an experiment, it's kind of a spreadsheet experiment, where I looked at a bunch of different run-walk ratios and a few different running speeds to see how, what's the relationship between them, what does that look like? And so I, I did a bunch of calculations, well actually I didn't do them, I found a very cool calculator on the internet where you can enter in all your run-walk variables, for example you can enter in, gee I run 15 seconds at a 10 minute per mile pace, I walk 15 seconds at a 20 minute per mile pace, and it'll calculate your overall pace. So I did that, that's very handy. Again, there's a link down below, have fun, it's pretty cool. It's kind of interesting to see how things relate. So generate a bunch of data, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple guy, I like pictures. So I took all that data and made a graph, and I think we'll go back into the home studio to talk about the graph, because I'll need to refer to some of my notes. Hey, welcome back. I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going to show you the chart and explain a little bit about it, because it's just a picture, but I want to make sure you understand the picture. Then we're going to cover a few key observations, and then we're going to wrap up with some recommendations. So here's the chart, and the first thing I want to point out is that the horizontal axis is ratio, and as you go to the right, ratio increases. Then the vertical axis is overall pace. Now this is in seconds per mile, it's a little easier for me to do it in seconds per mile. Uh, rather than minutes per mile, but we don't really care what those numbers are because we're going to look at the shapes of the curves. And as you can see, there are three curves. I did three different running speeds. The top black line is 12 minutes per mile. The middle red line is 10 minutes per mile. And the bottom blue line is 8 minutes per mile. Those are running speeds. And throughout this analysis here, I assumed one walking speed of 20 minutes per mile. So the way to look at this graph is if I'm using a two to one ratio, for example, I'm running 30 seconds, I'm walking 15, and when I run, I run at eight minutes per mile, and I walk at 20 minutes per mile, and my overall pace is about 600 seconds. That's just a matter of looking at the intersection of the ratio and whatever particular running speed you're looking at. Now the first observation we're gonna make about this, this graph, this picture, is that the curves are not straight lines. They're steeper at early ratios and, they get, and the curve gets very flat at higher ratios. And there's two reasons for that. One is they all start at the same point at zero ratio. A zero ratio is where I never run and only walk. And since all these are assuming a 20 minute per mile walking pace, then they all start at 1200 seconds per mile, which is 20 minutes per mile. And then as you increase the ratio, it gets flatter because if I never walk and I only run, I'll approach my overall pace will approach my running pace. For example, that 10 minute line there in the center of that red one, as I, as I increase my ratio and walk less and less, I'll approach my 10 minute per mile running pace. That's why out there at 32 to one, my pace at that point is overall pace, run walk pace is 10 minutes and eight seconds. 
So our first observation is that the higher the ratio, the less change in ratio matters for overall pace. So let me give you two data examples. Uh, if I go from a one to one ratio to two to one ratio at that 10 minute per mile running speed, my overall pace reduces about a minute and 19 seconds, which is pretty substantial. That's about a 10% increase. However, if I look at a higher ratio, if I go from eight to one to 16 to one, which is also doubling my ratio, I only improve my overall pace by 17 seconds, less than 3%. So again, the key observation here is the higher the ratio, the less changes in ratio matters for overall pace. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember that the higher the ratio, the less changes in the ratio will help improve your overall pace. Now, the second observation is not quite as significant as the first one. And that is, if you look at those curves, you'll notice that the slower speed, the 12 minute per mile uh, curve, is not quite as steep as the eight minute per mile running pace curve. And what we glean from that is, and this could be said two different ways, the first way of looking at it is the greater the difference between my running speed and my walking speed, the more uh, changing my ratio will help me. And the other way to look at it is the closer my running speed is my walking speed, the less changes in ratio will matter. So at low ratios, I still get a lot of change, but the faster I run, the more change in my ratio will benefit me for my overall pace. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please scroll down and hit that like icon. This likes really help my channel. Now, the last observation I want to make is I'm going to show you a new graph. You remember earlier in my video when I was out doing my run, I said, don't mess with the walking speed. Walking speed is not going to help you a whole lot. But I said, well, that was just an opinion at that time. Let's look at some data. So I actually did the analysis also looking at two different walking speeds, but only one running speed. So the curve I'm showing you now assumes a 10 minute per mile running speed. When I run, I go to 10 minute per mile pace, but two different walking speeds, a 20 minute per mile walking speed, which is what the other graph was, but I added a 30 minute per mile walking speed. And you'll see again at zero ratio, zero ratio means I'm not running, I'm only walking. I have two different uh, paces because the 30 minute per mile walking pace will start at 30 minutes per mile. But you notice they come down very quickly. And by the time I get out to almost a two to one and higher ratio, the curves are almost identical. So again, you, you, even though you might say, wow, well, gee, if I'm going to half to one ratio, I'm going to get a lot of change if I just walk a little faster. And that's true. You will. Uh, but don't forget also at, at a very low ratio like that, you also get a lot of improvement just changing your ratio. So I still err on the side of changing your ratio, just run a little longer rather than walking a little faster, because again, you want to get the benefits of taking a walk break. Don't, don't, don't uh, walk really fast and maybe not get those benefits. So let's put these observations into some kind of practical use and, and, and give you some recommendations, some guidelines. And for purpose of these, I drew a line at a four to one ratio. I just, it's kind of in the center of my graph. Maybe four to one is not the right number, but I think it's, it's a reasonable uh, point uh, for the guidelines I'm going to give you. So the first recommendation is if you want to increase your overall pace, but you're running at a ratio that's four to one or higher, don't bother increasing your ratio. Don't bother walking fast. You're just going to have to run faster. Again, the higher the ratio, the less improvement you get from in, uh, improving your ratio. And as the curves show, over four to one, you don't get a lot of improvement in your overall pace just by increasing your ratio. So just you're going to have to run faster. Now, the second guideline recommendation is if you're ratio is less than four to one, I would recommend you first increase your ratio because again, remember at those lower ratios, those curves are a little steeper. So if I change my ratio, I get, I get an improvement in my overall pace. Uh, but if that doesn't get you to where you want to get to, then you have to run faster. Again, remember we said if you're a slow runner and there's a smaller difference between your running speed and your walking speed, you don't get a lot of improvement changing your ratio. So you're going to have to run faster. Uh, so less than four to one, change your ratio first, running speed second. Now, again, I'm, I'm still recommending don't mess with your walking speed. However, if you feel you would like to. I would only do it if I if you use a very low ratio. By very low, I mean under one to one. If you're running like uh, if high, half to one, like you know, run 15 seconds and walk 30, and you want to walk a little faster, you'll get some improvement. But again, don't forget at those low ratios, you'll also get a lot of improvement increasing your running ratio. So my last guideline I'm going to recommend is what I'm going to do, and you can, you know, decide if it's right for you. I've decided that any ratio over six to one is meaningless for me. Going over 61, it doesn't really help your pace. 
And it's going to decrease the amount of walking breaks and walking time you're going to have. So I see no value in any ratio, six to one or higher. In fact, you could probably argue with me and say, Ralph, well, maybe you even want to run it four to one. I'd almost argue that maybe four to one is the highest you'd ever want to go. But um, for me, I kind of like to run a little longer sometimes. So I'm going to go no higher than a six to one. For a while, I was running at eight to one. I was running a four minute for four minutes and walking for 30 seconds. That's an eight to one ratio. <laughs> and the other day I decided, oh, I want to run a little less, maybe walk a little less. So I, I changed my four minute run to three minutes and 45 seconds and took my 30 second walk down to 15. And I didn't realize it till the other day I calculated and that was 15 to one. Well, I really was hurting myself and not helping myself anyway. So I, I would recommend don't go over six to one and you could probably make a very strong case for not going over a four to one ratio. Again, this is respect to pace. Maybe other reasons you want to go a higher ratio, and that's fine. But as far as pace and walking breaks, don't go over six to one. At least I'm not going to. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. I hope my analysis uh, was an eye opener for you as it was for me. I hope uh, it puts things in a perspective for you. Uh, but I do appreciate you watching. If you like this video, please scroll down and hit that like icon. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you stick around. Please hit that subscribe button also. Thanks so much and happy running.